Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we've traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. Tonight we have a wonderful program. So much of European Jewish history is seen as tragic and sad. This is a chance to see a different side. Raise the Roof shows how one of 200 of the Polish 17th century wooden synagogues that were destroyed by the Nazis were resurrected over a 10 year period. This is my little griffin. And everyone liked to paint their own griffin. We have as a special guest, a Long Islander, Alicia Katz, who participated in this project in Poland. I found out about the program through a friend at Brandeis University. He put up signs all over the studio. The sign said, once in a lifetime opportunity to come and help restore a synagogue in Poland. All I saw was painting and going abroad for the summer, and that was all I, I needed to get, to get hooked. When you make something using the tools and technology of the original maker, you actually have to get inside the mind and body of the maker. Part of what made the project so special was that everything was made with period products. The pigment was made from plant matter, and the glue that made the, the paste that turned it into paint was made out of rabbit skin. Everyone who was a part of this was there because they wanted to, not necessarily because they had any artistic talent. So they had to be very careful about who got to take the brush and place it on these primed boards that we were painting on. Every single participant had to create a full-scale practice piece of ceiling, and unless you were sure that you could have a steady hand and get your image down the way it was supposed to look, then only then were you allowed to put your brush on the panel. My father was from Poland and very against anyone going back to Poland, especially Jews. He felt that it was a place of death and pain and was very against my ever going, so I never went to Europe. Um, Alicia had approached us about it and we were eager for her to go because it's a wonderful experience, but my father was very against it. People my age had been going on trips to see concentration camps, to, to do these marches, the March of the Living. I didn't want to go on a trip that was inspired by grief. I wanted to go to create something and making it more beautiful than when it, what, what it was when my, when my grandfather left. I was one of the few people in the group who was Jewish at all which was shocking to me, that this, this was not a Jewish program. This was about art, this was about history, it wasn't about religion. The images that we were using to decipher the text were not the best quality. They were in black and white, they were blurry, and parts of the ceiling in the photographs were blocked. What was behind that column? What is that smudged mark? What letter is that? We were able to track down those passages from the Talmud and find out the letters that might have existed behind these objects. It was the greatest kind of mystery. And it was so fulfilling afterwards to know that I had been able to fill in a spot that was missing and had been missing since the synagogue had been standing originally. I think it's very important that everybody recognize that when you lose such important pieces of history to uh, this type of destruction, whether it's Jewish um, or not, uh, to have groups come together and try to replicate that, try to bring it back so people can walk through it and see what their ancestors created, and that's for every culture. It's a human project. It's a project about restoring a part of history, and history involves all of us, no matter who we are or what we believe.